Yo, how's it going everybody? Welcome back. So, yep, this is another simple at the desk kind of video. I notice actually a lot of you do seem to like these sort of just straightforward uh, riff takes of mine. Um, but suffice it to say, this is a topic if you're speaking in a public square of this kind. You kind of have to address it, at least a little bit. Now, if you followed me for a while, you probably know that one of the sort of central mantras I try to handle myself with when it comes to looking at tackling topics like these, like the ones we find in the news, is unlike a lot of people, I don't necessarily think it's vitally important to be the first one to offer their take, especially because information will continue to roll in. But another side to that actually comes in the nature of the response that we feel. So, curiously enough, I was actually looking at some uh, random 8chan board a friend had linked me to. It was moderately interesting, kind of funny. And then I noticed, actually, about an hour, I want to say, before the shooting itself took place, lots of people pressing F to pay respects to 8chan in general because they knew something was going to happen. Now, that being the case, when the news came out, I was linked to the video like a lot of other people. This was, at this point, also already a YouTube mirror, a re-upload of what was live-streamed to good old Facebook, the one tried-and-true source if you want to watch heinous felonies in live time. And after watching the video a couple times, I got the natural reaction that anybody with warm blood in their veins would, which was mixes of contempt, rage, revulsion, anger, sadness, all of that. And given what we saw scrawled on the rifle, given the excerpts of his manifesto which came out, uh, it was pretty easy to draw a conclusion and jump immediately to it. But just as often happens, once we got past the initial St. Looney's calling it a false flag operation, we ended up getting a lot of people coming out saying something seems weird here. Now, because of the trolly nature of the manifesto itself, because of his overall online anonymous presence, as small and hard to find as it was, really sort of pointing in a more lulzy, trollish direction, there were people even seeming to openly wonder if he wasn't just trying to frame the right or the alt-right for this to stir up problems. But as people went back and forth, I stepped away myself, played some video games, and then came back and really spent the rest of the night, well into the morning, actually reading through the manifesto itself, reviewing the video, trying to wrap my head around what happened in a clinical manner, right? Something objective, sort of medical approach that doesn't weigh the emotions while considering it. There were a number of things which I sort of came to notice about this, which people still seem to be fighting about now. So to start out with, let's talk about the radicalization. Now, we've heard lots and lots and lots of things about radicalization. In fact, much in the same way that the moral Puritan uh, type of moral majority mentality of the later 20th century oftentimes treated things like rap music, death metal, video games, violent films, and so on, as though they were just these tools by which they could program young people to just believe that being a violent psychopath is a great thing to be. Well, we've now got the mainstream media largely acting as though... PewDiePie, of all people, is radicalizing the youth to make them violent white supremacists who can very mechanically, very methodically murder 50 people. Now, we're going to get to the matter of the whole PewDiePie and subscribe to PewDiePie matter a little bit, but I wanted to talk about first the real radicalization. Now, since the events in church and in Christchurch uh, unfolded, more information has come out about the shooter. Now, I'm not going to say his name here specifically because I, I don't have it off the top of my head or have it written down. And there are a lot of people saying, we, can't, we shouldn't say his name, we shouldn't sh say his name or share his photo or anything like that because it just glorifies it and it gives more psychos the idea that if they do this, they can get famous. I'll tell you what, it's not really going to stop them. But all the same, what we've come to learn about him is that as a kid, he was kind of a fatty. He was an isolated kid, picked on regularly. Now, a lot of people, when they saw these reports, thought that they were attempts to sort of justify or rationalize who he's become and what he's done. Now, maybe some people out there might actually be attempting that, but I doubt most people would. But from my takeaway, one thing that that tells me is that in his young formative years, he was isolated and a bit of a loner. Now, if you tried to search for him on the internet, and I tried it for a number of hours, I could find barely anything, anything from previous years, previous months, bearing his name 
Which tells me that if it was engaging as frequently in online activity and gaming as well as claimed in the press, well, it's probably a safe bet that he liked to spend most of his time in those places where everyone's just an anon. And that kind of brings us to Pole. Now, it's a funny thing, when you go to places like Pole, or when you go and find these um, alt-right, white nationalist sort of uh, forums and image boards, looking over them as I did, especially looking over the initial 8chan post, which the shooter made prior to live streaming his massacre, at least allegedly, I don't know if that's been proven yet, but looking over those boards, I couldn't help but find an odd similarity to the incel world. Now, I'm not just saying that, like, these, you know, tubby wannabe Nazi fucks are themselves virgin incels, although, let's be honest, a certain amount of overlap really wouldn't be that surprising, would it? But all the same, what I noticed with these communities is that they are the same sort of isolated, uh, hypercharging bubbles that exist elsewhere for other interests. It's a tucked away secret little corner of the internet where people can go and just vent their idiotic and imbecilic frustrations either about not getting laid or about the darkies replacing people without any pushback. In fact, every notion that they come up with is reinforced and in some times piled on and added and given more to it. These are isolated communities which really do seem to serve to sort of hypercharge whatever dog shit, loathsome ideas, feelings, and mindsets that people who gravitate towards them end up entering with. And because there are seldom, if any, actual voices there bringing up the kind of dissent that the uh, that certain parties throughout the internet, especially those who like to call to, to call themselves red pilled, for instance. The, the sort of backs and forths, the challenging of ideas, the arguments themselves, really aren't there to be found. And if you go to these forums, what you will find instead is a whole bunch of people cheerleading each other. So much so that if you actually go back and can find the archived post from 8chan that the shooter allegedly posted before engaging in his murders, the more sickening thing than his wording in that and his lulzy, I'm gonna go IRL post, guys, bullshit was the responses, even after it came out what had happened. Godspeed, Anon. Target acquired. Mission accomplished. Go get them. Go fuck yourselves, boys. Hiding behind your fucking pepes and shit, I mean, quite honestly. That was one of the most disgusting elements of it. And that was also the thing which made me, well, I guess you could call it triple guess in this sense. The takes by those out there saying that, oh, he's probably not even right-wing. He's not a real... Uh, uh, ethno-nationalist. This is just a troll to get us to fight with each other. Because the truth is, is that the response is in those threads. And I found the same thing when viewing the mirrored video on YouTube. The responses underneath were from a bunch of these edgelord alt rightards who just show up just to cheer on mass murder. There are people, lots of them, in these communities who do indeed think that this was a glorious thing and that we need to kick the race war off. But then we come back around to this notion of, but Nick, even in his, uh, even in his manifesto, he was all over the place politically, calling himself an eco-fascist, and talking about labor rights, talking about all of these different things. That it's not clear what side he was on. Oh, fucking please. Because we need to remember that even within this manifesto, and I've read the entire thing twice, even within it, he says, dark humor can be a good way to break down the barriers and bring people into the fold, allowing them to sort of effectively, this is how you red pill them. But the thing is, though, is if you followed these sorts of matters, you know that this isn't the first time we've heard this shit. Is it? No. You know, guys, you remember Braving Ruin? Yeah, a number of conversations, and even on live streams, the kid routinely said, oh yeah, no, it's great hanging out with these liberals and skeptics and such, because I can just use humor to make it sound like I don't really believe it, but it's really just a dog whistle to find the people who might be interested in the idea and then bring them along. And we even heard another thing, actually, once again related to PewDiePie, when he quite unfortunately promoted the channel ER for that one anime review that he liked, only to find out that the kid does indeed hang out around and all of those little alt-right uh, corners of the web, the subreddits, the, the Chan post boards, those sorts of things. And in a conversation, he even openly said, yeah, let's use humor to draw them in, and then we'll red-pill them on this shit. This is the way it works. 
And if you look through any of these communities, or you look at any of the perhaps more prominent Anon e-celebs who've come out of these sorts of worlds, you find that this intense black-pilled kind of nihilism goes hand in hand with whatever the ideology they're not entirely confident in discussing openly because they know it's revolting usually tends to be. Everything's a troll, bro. It's all just a troll. It's just a meme, bro. This is that taken to the extreme. This is murder taken on as a meme. Murder for the lulls, but also not for the lulls. It's also to maybe confuse people, get them fighting at each other's throats. Just like everyone on that side was saying, right up until the point where they doubted his convictions. Now, when we take a look at the methodology, if you haven't seen the video, I don't necessarily encourage you watch it, but it is one of those things that's horrifyingly real to the point where it will drive the points home. But to watch it, what we see is not some rushed, uh, over-caffeinated, crazy, nervous guy who's having maybe second guesses, even the way Dylan Roof claimed to when he walked to the church. No, this is a guy who was completely committed to what he was doing. Took, if not joy, at least some visible satisfaction in his cold and mechanical methodologies. That right there says that his intent to kill these people, it wasn't just some crazy breakdown moment. He genuinely believed it. And with that, between that and the overabundance of tried-and-true, dyed-in-the-wool, white nationalist talking points, elaborated on at length throughout this extended manifesto of his, I think at this point, to try and say that he's not actually a genuine ethno-nationalist that's filled with bigoted hatred, and that the murders weren't largely inspired by that and this desire to see a race war, to say that that was just a smokescreen, a false flag, while he's really just doing it just to troll us all and fuck us up, I wouldn't say that it's an either-or thing as much as it's a combined sort of dualistic notion of his motivations. But to get onto his manifesto, and if you read it, I really, I do encourage you, actually, to try and read this thing. And a lot of people out there will probably try and say, Oh, but it's just a tool to radicalize people, and if it spreads too far, other people will be radicalized. Nobody's going to be convinced by this thing. It's not a convincing argument. It's just a bizarre hodgepodge diatribe of ardent hatred, lulzy trolling, and meme references. I mean, for fuck's sake, USA Today ran a story saying that the shooter had made some money on the side using cryptocurrency through a thing called BitConnect. If you've been on the internet for more than six months, you probably know what BitConnect really is. Hey, hey, hey! What's so, 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 BitConnect! Yeah. But in addition to this, they were routinely dropping the 14 words in there. He used the classic, I'm a Navy SEAL with X amount of confirmed kills copypasta. He dropped these internet references, which is the culture, the isolated and uh, highly charged, highly pressurized little mini culture that he comes from, where they bat this shit about all the time, just giving nods to old memes and having lulls at new ones. This manifesto is a litany of those things, mixed in with the kinds of shit that you hear everyone from Richard Spencer to Tommy Robinson talking about. Was this a designated troll, or is it more likely that he actually believes it and only understands, or only has the ability to thoroughly communicate something to the world so long as it's in this lulzy chance-speak? Now finally, I think it's worth mentioning the PewDiePie fallout of this. Now, his channel hasn't suffered. He just passed 90 million subscribers. Congrats, Felix, on that. But the notion, much like Wall Street Journal tried offering back some time ago, that PewDiePie, that Felix, is some kind of a Nazi, some kind of enabler, some kind of channel for radicalization, is fucking patently absurd. Anybody who can actually type and post and write that kind of shit, be they bloggers at the New York Times, or perhaps just some dipshit on Twitter who wants to virtue signal about how much he, like everybody else with blood in their veins and a brain in their head, hate fucking Nazis. Trying to blame PewDiePie for this is utterly absurd, and it tells me that they probably don't watch his channel. This guy is a goofy fucking Swede living in England whose entire internet presence is really just aimed at having a laugh at silly shit he finds, Reddit-tier memes even, and then 
hopefully making you laugh, hopefully making the people in his audience laugh, and within his own subreddit trying to boost and elevate and celebrate the work that they do on their own. There's nothing racist to any of Pewdie's, to any of Pewd's content, and to somehow infer that because one of the biggest memes on the internet, the T-Series versus PewDiePie race and the subscribe to PewDiePie tagline, which has already resulted in things as we know, such as hackers breaking into printers worldwide to expose security flaws and then also say subscribe to PewDiePie. To try and make the link between that and this shooting is patently fucking absurd. For my part, I count PewDiePie as one of the best things on YouTube right now. Not because I'm some massive fanboy, but simply because when his videos come up each day, when I see Pewds has got a video out, and I sit down and maybe sip my coffee, or I'm finishing lunch, and I decide I'm going to give it a watch, nine out of ten times after watching those videos, I walk away feeling a bit better than when I started. They're fun, nonsensical videos, without any particular lean, or tinge, or tint, or ideology anywhere within them. If anything, more actual attention should be paid to the sorts of charity work Felix has done from his monumental position of fame. And to try and tie this incident in New Zealand, or any other incidences of Nazi-based hate, to Felix, or really to any of these goofy channels, to anything that really exists outside of the poll arenas, or the certain subreddits, or whatever perhaps dark corners of YouTube, where these flaky imbeciles gather together freaking out about the fact that their grandchildren might not be the same shade of pasty and depressed as they are. To make those links is utterly absurd. What people need to begin doing in instances like this is coldly, methodically, objectively, and clinically observing the facts as they come out to piece together the real picture so that we can understand what's going on and figure out the true roots of how this vicious psychopath was genuinely radicalized and pushed into this dark fucking place that allowed him to do this kind of thing. He is sadly human. To call him a monster is just sort of incorrect. This was a man who did so. And the scariest thing about it, perhaps the reason so many of us are so eager to find scapegoats and easy explanations for these things, is because any rational, honest, and objective analysis of one's own psychology, or really just people in general, brings one back to the fundamental and oftentimes disturbing reality that within each and every one of us exists the potential to do this kind of thing. You can say I'd never do it in a million years, and I can say I'd never do it in a million years. However, within all of us, the same potential for goodness, charity, or evil and malevolence exists almost on an equal plane. So perhaps that's why so many people are scared to really look at the truths of what went into the making of this incident. Because perhaps, just maybe, they're somewhat aware that within all of the mess, mud, muck, and mire, there's something of a reflection waiting for them. My best wishes and... Uh, well, my heart goes out to those affected by this shooting. And it is my hope that when the dust finally settles on this, rather than tearing each other's throats out endlessly about what demographic or group is most responsible for this or that, we can actually maybe put the effort into finding our common humanity, that which binds us, not simply the fact of how evil we can be, but the revulsion that we commonly feel when confronted with this kind of thing. To maybe find out that, despite what we often hear, and despite what we might like to think, more often than not, we have more in common with each other than we do have that divides us. So cheers and thanks for holding in there. New video is still coming, still producing that big piece, taking quite a while, but I appreciate your patience. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. What do you think of these elements. Do you think radicalization can happen as easily as the media would like to pretend simply by watching a PewDiePie video and then the next step here at the Daily Stormer, perhaps? Do you think it's more complicated? Do you think there's elements and aspects to radicalization and the, the growth and pro proliferation of hatred that perhaps we need to spend more time considering and talking about that people seem more than happy to ignore? 
Furthermore, what do you think about these many subcultures which seem to continue developing? These places where people congregate to express their darkest and ugliest natures and sides around other people who are interested in uh, oftentimes sort of supporting those narratives, sort of uplifting that sense of malevolence that people show up on these boards with. Do you think they play any role in this, or do you think that's just a side effect of untempered hatred without any adequate vessels or vehicles by which to express it otherwise? I'm interested to hear your thoughts as always. And as always, links are down below. I'll see you guys again here soon. Until then. Bye. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting. Or being lied about. Don't deal with lies. Or being hated. Don't give way to hating. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster. And treat those two imposters just the same.